Hello everyone. In previous class, we discussed about the manual muscle testing and importantly, we discussed about the grading system of manual muscle testing. So in previous class, we discussed the purpose of MMT. Why do we perform MMT testing on the muscles to find out the muscle strength? That is, that was the main important purpose of MMT. We also discussed various indications for performing MMT which were mainly central nervous system damage, peripheral nerve injury, which can cause weakness of the muscles and other various indications. We also discussed about the importance of assessing range of motion. Finding out available range of motion is important so that we can grade the muscle strength accordingly. Next important point we discussed was about the role of gravity. So we know grade three, muscle strength grade 3 can perform against the gravity but muscle strength grade 2 cannot perform the movement against the gravity so therefore the role of gravity is important while we measure the strength of muscles so now let's revise grades of mmt so first we uh, first let's discuss about grade 3 what does grade 3 strength muscle strength mean? It means that the muscle is able to perform the function against the gravity, only against the gravity, but it cannot perform its function against any additional resistance. For example, hip joint by psoas and iliacus can take the hip joint to full range of motion against the gravity, only against the gravity. That will be graded as grade 3. Once patient is able to perform the hip flexion to full range of available range of motion against the gravity, then we can add some resistance, manual resistance by the therapist for grading higher than grade 3. So higher than grade 3 is grade 4. If the muscle is able to function against the gravity as well as against the minimal resistance applied by the therapist, it will be graded as grade 4 muscle strength and importantly it has to fulfill the available range of motion now once uh, we have graded it as grade 4 we can add some more resistance that is maximum resistance for that particular muscle and then check whether the muscle is able to function against the gravity as well as against maximum resistance and fulfill the range of available range of motion if muscle is able to perform then we will grade it as grade 5 what if muscle is not able to perform against the gravity if the muscle is not able to perform against the gravity we have to change the position of the patient position of the joint in horizontal plane so that we can test for grade 2 muscle strength so what does grade 2 mean Grade 2 means patient is able to perform only in horizontal plane. That is patient cannot perform against the gravity. So patient's muscle will be able to fulfill the available range of motion in horizontal plane but not against gravity. If patient is not able to perform in horizontal plane then we may have to grade it as grade 1 or grade 0. Grade 1 means there is only flicker of contraction of the muscle. And grade 0 means there won't be any movement or there won't be any flicker of contraction. Now these are the basic grades of MMT that is from grade 0 to grade 5. There are some more additional grades which are important. Those are grade 3 minus, grade 2 plus and grade 2 minus. So what does grade 3 minus mean? Again let's revise grade 3. Grade 3 means patient's muscle is able to perform full available range of motion against gravity but not against any additional resistance 3 minus means lower than grade 3 it means patient is able to complete more than half of the available range against gravity but cannot fulfill the available range now let's move on to 2 plus for understanding 2 plus let's revise Grade 2. Grade 2 means patient is able to perform full available range of motion 
but in gravity eliminated position that is in horizontal plane 2 plus means more than 2 that means we don't need horizontal plane it will be against the gravity 2 plus means patient is able to complete less than half of the available range against gravity so 3 was 3 minus was more than half of the available range and 2 plus means less than half of the available range against gravity so what does 2 minus mean 2 minus means patient is able to complete partial range of motion in gravity eliminated position so for testing 2 minus patient's position should be in horizontal plane or patient's joint should be in horizontal plane so these are additional grades that is 3 minus 2 plus and 2 minus these are important grades other than the basic grades from 0 to 5 now let's visualize some of the examples for grades now this first slide first video shows where the therapist is checking the range of motion available range of motion by performing passive range of motion then she instructs the patient to perform against the gravity without any resistance and if patient is able to perform full range then it will be graded as grade 3 now we have to add some more resistance to that movement to test for grade 4 and grade 5 so if patient is able to perform against the gravity then we will move to grade 4 and grade 5 but if patient is not able to perform against the gravity then we will move to grade 2 or grade 1 and 0 next video you can see where therapist will check for available range of motion by performing passive range of motion now this is the available range now the patient is instructed to perform active range of motion to complete that available range that is hip flexion as you can see the patient is not able to perform hip flexion independently against the gravity so therefore this grade can be grade 3 minus or 2 plus moving on to principles of performing MMT so what are the important principles that we have to remember before performing MMT first one is position of the patient the starting position for the joint should be against the gravity so that we can test grade 3 first once we test grade 3 and if patient is not able to perform grade 3 then we can move on to horizontal plane positioning of the joint next important principle is stabilization the part proximal to the tested joint or the tested part should be always stabilized so that the patient gets freedom of movement without losing the balance as you can see in the picture the therapist is stabilizing the lower limb so that the patient can perform trunk extension next important point is to find the available range of motion so how do we find the available range of motion by performing passive range of motion and measuring it by goniometry next principle is pressure so when we apply the pressure for resisting the movement against the gravity we have to apply opposite to the line of the muscle pull that is our vector should be against the vector of the muscle so to understand this we need to understand the muscle vector we have to have the knowledge of muscle vector the pressure which we apply for minimal and maximal resistance should be applied gradually so that the muscle gets time to resist the pressure if we suddenly apply the pressure then there may be muscle injury so therefore we need to be applying the pressure gradually whenever possible we need to use long lever for applying the pressure for example if we are testing the swas measure for hip flexion then we can apply the pressure at the knee joint area or at the ankle joint area so if we apply the pressure at the knee joint or distal femur then it means it is short lever and if we apply resistance at the ankle joint area or the shin bone then it will be long lever system the test will be always reliable if the same therapist retest the MMT for example in day 1 if therapist X 
test the muscle strength day 15 also be tested by the therapist X so that the reliability will be perfect addition to that to make the test more reliable and more accurate the therapist should have a lot of knowledge about the muscle attachments about the muscle vectors muscle function and about the knowledge of positioning and gonimetry uh, if you don't know the muscle attachments or the direction of the muscle vector or muscle function then you won't be able to apply the minimal resistance or maximal resistance against the movement if we know the uh, positioning techniques then we know where how to position the joints whether to position the joints in crook lying position long sitting position sitting side lying etc and gonimetry as you know it's important to measure the range of motion not only the knowledge of gonimetry and positioning but the therapist also should have the skills of gonimetry and positioning now let's move on to testing the muscle one by one first let's move on to anterior deltoid and coracobrachialis so what is the function of anterior deltoid and coracobrachialis it is the flexion of the shoulder joint so these are the flexors of shoulder joint so for testing grade 5 4 and 3 the patient position should be in short sitting with arm at side, elbow slightly flexed and forearm pronated. As you can see in the picture here, the patient is in short sitting with arm at the side, elbow slightly flexed and forearm pronated and therapist is standing behind the patient. Now the therapist will check the available range of motion by performing passive range of motion for shoulder flexion and then the patient is instructed to perform shoulder flexion against the gravity and if patient is able to perform against the gravity then it will be graded as grade 3 after it is graded as grade 3 then we can advance to grade 4 and 5 by applying minimal resistance or maximal resistance if the patient is to, if the patient is able to perform against minimal resistance and against gravity it will be grade 4 if the patient is able to perform against gravity and against maximal resistance, it will be grade 5. So for grade 2, it should be gravity eliminated position. For flexion of the shoulder, it would be side lying. And the couch is placed in front of the patient where the arm would be supported. So patient has to flex the arm. Where, where it is supported by the couch so you can observe the video here so patient performs flexion of the shoulder in horizontal plane where the arm is being supported by the couch so the gravity is eliminated so the position is side lying for assessing grade 2 for flexion of the shoulder you can see another angle to see how it moves in horizontal plane so you can clearly see here the flexion of the shoulder is performed in horizontal plane next moving on to demonstration 2 that is for posterior deltoid latissimus dorsi and teres major so what is the function of these three muscles so these three muscles combines to perform extension of glenohumeral joint so to perform MMT for grade 5, 4 and 3, what should be the position of the patient for extension of glenohumeral joint? So the position of the patient should be prone where patient would be performing against the gravity extension of glenohumeral joint. So patient would be prone lying with arm at the side and shoulder internally rotated that is palm facing upward. So again the therapist will apply passive range of motion first to find the available range so after the therapist per, uh, completes the passive range of motion and knows what is the available range he instructs the patient to complete that range actively against the gravity so if patient is able to perform actively against the gravity and complete the range it would be grade 3 and one more thing you need to notice here is the therapist is um, controlling or stabilizing the proximal part that is the clavicle and the scapula to reduce any trick movement 
and thirdly if patient is able to perform the grade 3 then resistance will be applied and if patient is able to hold the position against the resistance it would be grade 4 or 5 depending upon the amount of resistance applied so again you can observe the video here first is passive range of motion to find the available range then we ask the patient to perform grade 3 that is extension against gravity and complete the range <clears throat> and if patient is able to perform this then we would move on to test for grade 4 and 5 that is by applying resistance so instruction given to the patient is lift your arm as high as you can hold it don't let me push it down for grade 4 and 5 so that is the instruction you can use the next to apply for grade 2 how to position the patient for grade 2 again similar to flexion the position of the patient should be side lying facing away from the supporting couch so here the difference is patient is facing away from the supporting couch so that the extension would be supported you can observe the video here the extension is performed in horizontal plane so the position is side lying next for demonstration 3 for middle deltoid and supraspinatus so what is the function of middle deltoid and supraspinatus function is abduction of glenohumeral hemorrhal joint so the plane is coronal plane now let's let's move on to grade 5 4 and 3 testing the position should be again short sitting where the arm can move against the gravity now first again the therapist will apply the passive range of motion technique to find the full range of motion after the full range of motion is found patient will be instructed to perform active range of motion and therapist will be supporting the proximal part or stabilizing the proximal part the patient is able to perform grade 3 and after patient is able to perform grade 3 abduction resistance would be applied and examined if patient can hold the position against the resistance now for grade 2 the position should be in gravity eliminated position so for abduction what would be the position for grade 2 for abduction the position of patient should be supine lying where patient can perform abduction in horizontal plane so again you need a couch or a suspension to support the arm here we are using the couch to support the arm and movement of the abduction in horizontal plane so patient supine and we instruct the patient to perform abduction and patient is able to perform abduction in horizontal plane that is gravity eliminated position so we have discussed uh, three demonstrations here for shoulder flexors shoulder extensors and shoulder abductors so you can revise this video again i would be sharing the link with you all thank you